So now, now let's look at laws and policies affecting refugees and people seeking asylum. So what are the relevant laws and policies? In terms of international law, the 1951 Refugee Convention was adopted by the United Nations as the key legal document governing international standards for refugee protection. So it covers things like definition of a refugee and the legal protection, rights and assistance that a refugee is entitled to receive. We also have the European Convention on Human Rights. This is all about protecting human rights and the rule of law and promoting democracy across Europe. We then have UK law and legislation. And as many of you will know, laws around immigration and the asylum process are made by the UK government. The Scottish government doesn't have responsibility for immigration or asylum, but they can still make laws and policies around other aspects of life, which affect refugees and people seeking asylum and their integration. An example of this is the new Scots refugee integration strategy, which I'll talk about in more detail in one of the next slides. Let's now look at levels of government in the UK and their responsibilities. So the UK government, as you know, is responsible for asylum and immigration, as well as defence, foreign affairs, much of the benefit system and a range of other things. The Scottish government is responsible for education, health, housing, some social security benefits and local government. Local government, in Scotland we have 32 local authorities or councils and they are responsible for public services, so education, social care, roads, transport, housing and cultural and leisure services. So it's important when you're trying to affect change that you're clear who has the power to make the change that you want to see so that you know where you should target your efforts. So in Scotland, we have the new Scots Refugee Integration Strategy, which was developed by the Scottish Government, the Convention of Scottish Local Authorities, the Scottish Refugee Council and other partner organisations. The strategy is really just a long term plan which aims to support refugees and people seeking asylum in Scotland's communities, and it sets out a vision for a welcoming Scotland. It covers areas like the needs of asylum seekers, employability, welfare rights, housing, education, language, health and communities. And there can be opportunities for community organisations to get involved, both in the development and the delivery of the strategy. For more information about New Scots Refugee Integration Strategy, please see our web page. So there are lots of options in terms of who community organisations can influence, and this will very much depend on the issue or the change that you want to see and who has the power to make that change. It could be policymakers or decision makers in the UK government, Scottish government or local authorities. It could be people who are responsible for running public services, for example, schools or health services, to make sure that these services are meeting the needs of refugees and asylum seekers. Or it could be Scottish communities, particularly around tackling racism, raising awareness of refugees and encouraging them to play their part in welcoming people. It could be all of the above, or it could be a combination, particularly if you're trying to change the wider discrimination that refugees can often face. 